Hey, AP students, in this video, I'm going to share with you how to improve your writing into what we call level two writing. So first off, what do I mean by level one and level two writing? How about I give you some examples? If you sit through any college ed class on education, odds are your professor will talk to you about Bloom's taxonomy, basically a hierarchy of learning within the classroom. The lowest level is just simple knowledge where a student can go in and define, they can recall, they can simply repeat information kind of your basic definitions. Level two writing, and this is all we're trying to do, is, is go from knowledge to comprehension. Level two writing is where you can explain information. You can defend it. You can extend the information, show how and why it all matters. Give me multiple examples. Inferring is just such an important skill in a push, as well as comparing and contrasting. So always thinking about, and when you're writing these things, how, do we, how can we extend information and not just simply define it. So I'm about to give you a few ways of thinking about it as well. You're taking a lot of information and essentially you're connecting it. You're showing me the relationships and making those connections. It's so very important in AP. Think of it this way as well. What led up to an event happening? And then you can get into your level one writing where you tell me what actually happened or what the event was. Then you can define or simply recall. But I want you to extend the information by telling me the long-term impact or the long-term effect. So in the end, what happened to it? Also, a third way of thinking about it, too. What if I give you these three events from the American Revolution? The Stamp Act, Tea Act, Boston Tea Party. How do we go from the Stamp Act to the Tea Act? And then how do we get from the T Act to the Boston Tea Party? So those gaps right there where you're showing me the, the connections and you're showing me the relationships, that can help you earn big points on your LEQs, DBQs, and even your SAQs as well. It's just good writing to make those connections. Just go beyond defining. So I want to give you some examples. Here's what I mean by level one writing. And so, for example, number one, Washington's far farewell address warned others to not become involved in foreign affairs and avoid political parties. Missouri Compromise, it banned slavery in the Western territories. And then also the Treaty of Versailles, well, it stopped the fighting in World War I. A student can be in danger of failing to show how and why the information is important if they only mention the topic in passing. This is a very common um, thing to do in a history class because most students are used to writing very uh, linearly, as in they're used to telling me the story of the Civil War. But I don't want just the story of the Civil War. I want you to argue why it was unavoidable. It could not be stopped. So think of it that way. Level two examples. I don't know if I'll go through every single one of these. It might be a good idea to pause the video. So I've typed in some examples of how to kind of extend it. But what do you notice that I'm doing right here? Again, Washington's Federal Address led to a strong feeling of neutrality for many years. It, it led to the formation of the Federalist and the Democratic Republican parties. And then as a result, it, re it resulted in regionalism and party identification and became a trademark of politics for years to come. I continue that with the Missouri Compromise, how it ignited the debate over the spread of slavery and then eventually led to additional concerns from Southern politicians over the spread of slavery in later events, such as the Compromise of 1850. So I'm extending it. I'm showing what led up to it and then ultimately what happened afterwards. And then finally, the Treaty of Versailles. Um, I, I go into the idea of the insistence of harsh punishments and the consequences of that. Uh, damaging the year, the German economy and then creating the perfect conditions for radical leaders such as Hitler to rise to power. So I hope you see what I'm doing right there. I'm giving I'm more specific. I'm clear. And then also I'm giving um, kind of the, the those transitions. What did it ultimately amount to? What did it lead to? And what how did it how did it start in the beginning and how did it start to, to begin off with anyway? So I hope that makes some sense as well. How about this? This is a real student prompt from an essay about the Vietnam War and how foreign policy changed. Again, I don't know if I'm going to um, read through all of this, so it's a good idea to, to pause the video and kind of skim through it yourself. But in general, this is another good example of level one writing with some factual errors as well. The argumentation and analysis of this particular paragraph can become very unclear if the student is not specific and shows how and why the evidence matters. So sometimes it can be kind of confusing to read um, if you don't elaborate on those topics. So for this particular paragraph, there are three things that stick out. They had three opportunities to dive deeper into level two writing. Did you notice that the student does not expand upon the idea of containment to begin off with? 
And then when they get to the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, they actually kind of messed up the analysis with a little bit. I won't get into all of that, but additionally, the student does not show how and why the resolution made any sort of a difference in the war. And then the third part about it, the domino theory, it's also only mentioned in passing. So you've got to pretend that you are, are, it's almost like you're pretending that you are a teacher and you're explaining this to students yourself. So you have to elaborate and be very specific with the analysis of whatever you're discussing. Also, let me give you a good example. So again, another student example, this prompt was continuity changes on the American home front for minorities. So again, I'm not gonna read through this entire paragraph, but what do you notice? You have key terms, a Philip Randolph double V campaign, executive order 8802, Cesar Chavez Bracero program. But what this student is doing that's really, really um, good is the fact that they're not spending the entire paragraph telling me the history of the double V campaign. They're using that information to back up their claim. They're using that information to support whatever their argument was. And then they, you see where he says, even where a stark contrast to the anti-immigrant laws against Eastern Europeans during the 1920s. There's an example of level two writing. They talk about the Bracero program, how it bettered the lives of migrant workers. And then eventually led to great leadership and future leaders like Cesar Chavez to rise to fight for better civil rights for Hispanic Americans as well. So those are good examples. They're making good connections as well. So level two writing is tough, but I hope you also see that it's very doable. All right. Let me know if you still have some questions. Thanks so much for watching.